into each of these things, determine whether you think they are related. So currently, on a, on a, a national scale, there are more than 10,000 sealed indictments. Um, what is going to happen with those indictments, I can't say. Who those indictments are for, I can't say. But I can say that 10,000 or more is an it's an absurdly high number of sealed indictments to have um, at one time in America. And this, this is just the United States, just in our judicial system, more than 10,000 sealed indictments. I'm interested to see what those are for and whether that's part of a RICO case. Um, in a RICO case, you could charge all the conspirators for the crimes if you can convict one person who is a co-conspirator. Uh, they use it in busting up gangs and, and drug trafficking rings and stuff like that. Uh, you've heard the term RICO case before. I think they even did it in Batman, Commissioner Gordon, whatever. So in addition to that, there have been more than 10,000 arrests uh, over the course of the last year and a half under the Trump presidency related to sex trafficking, human trafficking, and pedophilia. Whether that's related, I can't say, but Again, this executive order points to human rights violations. It points to corruption. The sealed indictments are sort of a mystery there. Uh, the pedophilia and sex trafficking arrests, those are human rights violations. Uh, and they would fall under the scope of that executive order. So are they related? Maybe, maybe not. Do your own reading and decide. So again, um, I think I mentioned this once before, but there have been, I believe at this point, about 600 uh, CEO resignations from companies that you would recognize, uh, household names, Samsung, uh, Dell, Papa John's. So why are these CEOs resigning? Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying this with any level of certainty, this is just my my perspective here, if I were the CEO of a company and I were going to be indicted for some sort of human rights violations, let's say I'm using slave labor to make my products, that would fall underneath this human rights violations executive order. Do I let myself be indicted as CEO of uh, Ben Enterprises or do I resign and then let myself be indicted as Ben, ordinary citizen? former CEO of Ben Enterprises. I'm going to go with former CEO as opposed to current CEO. Um, that's just my thoughts on it. Look into the CEO resignations. Um, I'm, I may be wrong about these things, but I'm not lying. And you're going to hear that multiple times from me. Um, Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo Bay has been under construction, a good deal of construction. Uh, the Arizona National Guard was deployed to Guantanamo Bay in November. And uh, there's been a lot of, I don't know what the source of the funding is for it, but a lot of construction going on at Guantanamo Bay. Uh, is that to make room for people to go there and be questioned? Is it for detentions? Is it an escalation of the, the war on terror? I don't know what it's for, but it, it sort of fits into my confirmation bias narrative here. There are more than twice the number of politicians on both sides of the aisles who will not be seeking re-election in the 2018 election. So sort of fits the same narrative I'm, I'm rolling with as far as CEO res resignations. If I'm uh, the representative for District X and I don't want District X to be implicated or affected in any way by a potential indictment for me using uh, products made in a sweatshop in Detroit. I don't, who, who knows? Make something up. I am going to not seek re-election under those circumstances if I believe there's a chance I'm going to be implicated underneath this executive order. Back in October, November time frame, uh, there were, I think, 22 Saudi Arabian politicians and businessmen arrested 
and subsequently interrogated somewhere imprisoned. I believe uh, Al Walid uh, just bought his way out of prison or possibly uh, talked his way out of prison, which I think is more likely. Uh, he would have had to pay, I believe, $6 billion in bail uh, to be released from the prison he was being held in in Saudi Arabia. Those guys were interrogated at the Four Seasons Hotel in Saudi Arabia following a, a mass arrest. Like I said, I, I believe the number was 22 individuals. I could be wrong about that. It's been some months now. Um, additionally, just last year, um, <clears throat> George Soros, a uh, multi-billionaire, uh, heavily influential in politics, donates $18 billion to the Open Societies Foundation. Uh, the Open Societies Foundation is a charitable organization uh, promoting open borders, a, uh, a global government, a global uh, currency, a basically being promoting the idea that we are citizens of the world and we should do away with borders and uh, national currencies and things like that in favor of a uh, a global strategic approach. So. Again, if, if I am in that position, and once more I'm making this fit the narrative I'm proposing, understand that I'm, I'm not saying this with any certainty. These are just the connections that are happening in my mind. If I am to be implicated for human rights or corruption, and I have, let's say, $25 billion in the bank, which I believe is about right for George Soros, um, I need to get those assets into a place where they're going to be protected. Unfortunately for George Soros, um, I th you could probably Google Sor Soros funds frozen um, because there is a specific nonprofit organization uh, that he backs who actually did just have their assets frozen under this executive order. So this may just be the first domino to fall in a long line of these um, more public implications of the executive order could be totally unrelated. Again, like I said, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to connect these dots in my head uh, as best I can. So in summation, Donald Trump, what, why would a billionaire subject himself to the kind of attacks, um, threats on his life, defamation of character. Why would he do that for a, a $400,000 a year salary that he then doesn't even take? Uh, he takes a dollar of that salary and I believe the rest of it goes to charity. Uh, so have any other presidents done that in the past? Maybe they have, I've not heard of it, but so that, that sort of gets rid of the, the money motive in my mind. Uh, I know a lot of people believe that he might be beholden to Russian banks and that's actually what the Russia investigation is about. I don't really buy into that. It could be, I don't know everything. Um, so I don't think money is the motive. Um, fame, uh, it could be another possible motive, but he's he's already one of the most famous people in the world. Um, he's a he's a branding guy. People recognize that name, uh, whether it's a, a pseudonym or not. People recognize the name Trump. Uh, he's been in movies. He's been on television. He's a reality TV star. He's a game show host. He doesn't need fame. Um, if you look at his actions. It seems like he, what other president calls out corruption within his own administration? What other politician calls out corruption within their own district? Corruption that they themselves can influence personally and may have actually caused personally. I've not seen anyone else do that so publicly as the president does through his Twitter feed. Um, calling out individuals by name who are engaged in corruption. I'm assuming hoping people that will start digging into that stuff and it'll become more public. Well, what's going on in Adam Schiff's district? I don't know. He's tweeting about it. Let's go and see. So 
this executive order is especially important um, and these are just a few of the things that I think are closely tied to the implications in this executive order. I'd encourage you to do some research for yourself. Um, connect, connect the dots whichever way you, you see fit, whichever way makes the most sense to you. This is just sort of the, the narrative my mind is creating. And once again, I'm not saying that any of these things are connected. I'm saying that that's the way it seems to me. My, my subjective perception here is that Trump is, is and was disgusted with the corruption in our, our political system. Um, and all of the, all of the tentacles that, that emanate from that central authority. Um, I think people on both sides of the aisle can agree that our, our, there's a good deal of corruption in the government. Uh, there's a good deal of corruption in banking. There's a good deal of corruption in business. And what I don't understand is how people are so vehemently opposed to Trump's America first agenda and and this sort of agenda where we're going after human rights violators and stuff that seems like a bipartisan issue and it's interesting to me that in spite of it being bipartisan in in appealing to both rational logical democrat republican it it has vast it has broad appeal mass appeal and yet there's very little conversation, at least from what I can see in my this much time I see the mainstream media at the gym. There's very little conversation about these pedophilia arrests, very little conversation about sex trafficking, very little conversation about drug trafficking, very little conversation about any of these things that are linked to the human rights abuses and corruption that are outlined in this. So draw your own conclusions. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, Please send me a message if you think I'm wrong. Please send me a message if you think I'm right. I really want to hear your thoughts about this because, again, I, 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 can't, I can't fit this stuff into another narrative. And I think I'm a pretty creative person, but I also have biases just like everyone else's. I'd really like to hear what you think. Thanks.